Proving Grounds Grandmaster this week. So it's not that bad, but just like every other GM, you've got to know enemy spawns and it helps so much. So hopefully this video helps you with that. If you can complete it this week, you'll get the Adept Hung Jury, which is a really good scout rifle and you can farm as many of them as you want, as long as you can get the clears, of course. And it is double loot this week, so it's a really good time to farm some GMs, so get on it. With that out of the way, let's get into some stuff you should bring. As with most GMs, there are a lot of loadouts that can work totally fine, so this is not the end-all, be-all, but this is what we used, and it worked totally fine. We've got Solar and Strand Surges, so it definitely helps bringing those weapons and subclasses in. I used a Strand Titan, since Suspend is just so insanely good against champions, and for getting really solid ad control as well. So you don't even really need to bring an unstoppable weapon if you go with Strand. I prefer using an LMG here. I know some people like using rockets. I like the LMG for ad clear. It just works a little bit better for me. You can hang back, clear enemies really easily from far away. And I kind of had to do a little script rewrite here because I went in with the Skyburner's Oath and it's amazing. It's got a lot of utility in this strike specifically because you can shoot through the shields to destroy that shield generator. But it also goes straight through the Fatal Ink shields and just deals a lot of damage with the Scorch and it's just a safe weapon to use. So definitely try this. For the other classes, we liked having one on the Oculus Hunter for the good team invisibility, for safe revives, and obviously for tethering large groups of enemies and doing more damage to the boss as well. Obviously, you can bring a Well of Radiance Warlock. It always helps in like any GM, but just know that almost everything in the Proving Ground Strike can almost instantly kill you even inside a well if you're not careful. The solar threat is relentless, so make sure you place your wells in safe spots if possible. I mean, we did our first run without a Well of Radiance and we were totally fine, but it can help. It makes it just a little bit easier. But with that out of the way, let's move into the strike. Starting off, you'll have to fight your way up this hill area. You've got a lot of enemies, Scorpius turrets, and both barrier and unstoppable champions here. What my team likes to do is make our way up the left side of the hill and kind of use it as cover. It's a lot safer than fighting your way up the middle or the right side. The Scorpius turrets will kill you extremely quickly, so make sure to take them out before you head out into any open areas. Just destroy them right when you see them if possible, and preferably at a distance. And once everything on the hill is taken care of, you're going to get a mini boss, a few adds, and another unstoppable champion. Keep hanging out on this left side if you can, just prioritize that unstoppable champion if possible. Whatever you do, do not get caught in the mini boss's line of sight. It's legitimately a 0.1 second time to kill if he starts firing his minigun at you. So take out the adds first. Once everything besides that mini boss is cleared, you can start kind of working away at his health and make sure to utilize cover. He'll only focus on one of you at a time. So when he's focused on one of your teammates, use that time to damage him. Once you get him down to about 50% HP, a huge immunity dome is gonna appear over him and another round of adds will spawn in along with another unstoppable champion. These adds will spawn in from the door on the left, so you can definitely spawn trap them. Just make sure to be ready for them as soon as they exit the door if possible. The quicker you can kill them, the easier this part's gonna be. Once everything here is cleared, you've gotta take down the immunity shield. And to do this the easiest way, you'll wanna make sure that you have the shield generator that you have to shoot lined up between you and the mini boss. When he shoots you, he's not gonna be able to shoot through that shield generator, and he usually stands completely still while doing this, so it makes it really easy for you to just kinda of hide behind it as cover and shoot it and destroy it. Once the shield is down, obviously move out of the way as quickly as you can, and then finish him off, stay safe while doing it. Again, his turret is no joke. You can now move on to the next area, which is for sure the toughest part of the strike in my opinion. This is the tank room, and it really helps if you stay up here before making your way down. You can take out the two interceptors and quite a few adds while staying kind of safe. All you have to do is have one player jump down really quickly. You'll see that Weeb here jumps down. He's gonna basically bait the interceptors to come back to us. That's gonna draw them forward and we can kind of head glitch them here as you can see. But once everything that you can see dies, you've gotta head down into the room. So a ton of enemies in this room. You've got two barrier champions that will spawn in right away. And as long as they're hanging in the back of the room, you can use that time to kill all of the adds that will be swarming you if you're not careful. The Scion snipers that spawn up on the left and right balconies are no joke here. So make sure you're keeping an eye on them too. I would say that now is a good time to pop a Well of Radiance if you have one there. If not, it's okay. But when I ran as a Warlock, I popped mine on the left side behind this cover here. And again, just make sure you're not placing it out in the open because you'll die. 
the middle bridge area kind of seems to be where a lot of the enemies like to cluster up. So it's a good area to toss your grenades, supers, heavy ammo, anything you've got over there. So after you clear this entire wave, a new wave of enemies will spawn in and it is a lot tougher. Instead of two interceptors, you've got two goliath tanks and two more barrier champions, adds, snipers, and some beefy majors. The Goliath tanks are definitely the biggest threat here, but you can't neglect the war beasts that will eventually make their way to you. Just stay behind this left area of cover again and try to have one player deal with the left tank first. The other two players should be making sure that all of the enemies that are swarming you are dealt with. Obviously, remember those Scion snipers, they're brutal. After some time, the barrier champions will eventually start making their way to you, so you don't want to be caught in a situation where you're unprepared for them. If this does happen, the player on Goliath tank duty needs to just stop what they're doing and help take out the barriers. Then after that, you can start working on the Goliath tanks together. But thankfully, once you clear this wave, that's it. So only two waves and you're completely done with this section. So to recap, you should always be hanging in the back. There's no reason why you should ever make your way towards the front of the room. And you need to make sure that someone is always scouting for those snipers and enemies that start to rush you. As long as you can keep enemies at a distance, this section should be okay. Moving on to the next major area, this is where you have to deposit the two arc charges. Once you come out of this hallway, you'll instantly be greeted by a few enemies and an unstoppable champion right when the door opens. So make sure you hang back, otherwise you'll die. If you look at that doorway, there are enemies on the other side of the room to the left. So again, you'll just wanna play it safe here and kind of peek out to clear them all. Once everything is cleared, have someone pick up the arc charge to get the next section started. But after they pick it up, they can actually just drop it next to the door that opens so they can help clear enemies in that middle room. You've got a bunch of gladiators in here, some other ads, as well as a barrier champion. Deal with what you can see in the doorway first. There's no reason to go into the room. Just wait for the enemies to come out to you and deal with them as they come out. Once all of those enemies are cleared, you can then kind of peek into the room and look to the right, which is where the barrier champion is going to be. So if you have your suspend grenade up, this is a good time to kind of toss one in that area since it'll make dealing with this group of enemies just a breeze. You can then deposit the arc charge that you have now. If it disappeared, just go back and get it. It's totally fine. And then you can progress to the next room where you'll have to get the second arc charge. Once the door opens, you'll have a few enemies that rush you. Just take them out and then take out the enemies across the room from you. There is a barrier champion on the other side of the room, but you're going to want to take out the adds first since they will be launching just tons of solar grenades. There are a couple solar snipers, I believe, as well. So if you don't deal with them, you're just going to get bombarded with all of those. Once you can safely take out the barrier champion, you obviously want to pick up that arc charge and do the same thing. Get ready for another wave of enemies if you're quick enough. If you take too long to kill the enemies across the way by where the arc charge is, you'll actually get the next round of enemies that spawn in by where you're supposed to deposit that arc charge. So that's another barrier champion and a bunch of other enemies. So you don't want to take too long while doing this. In this whole arc charge area, by the way, feel free to use your supers since you'll actually get a free super recharge once you reach the boss. So once that room is clear, you can deposit the second arc charge and the middle door will now open. You'll be greeted with a bunch of war beasts and other enemies that are rushing you. So yeah, super here if you want. Just keep an eye out. Don't be too reckless. You don't need to go in too far since after a few seconds, both a barrier and an unstoppable champion will spawn in. Just retreat back as far as you need to, if you do need to, but this room really isn't bad at all. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's time for the final boss, Ignovin. Once you begin the Rite of Proving, this will start the fight and will also get your super fully regenerated. To start off, Ignovin is going to launch only one round of these fireballs at you. Don't worry, a lot more will come your way. These are extremely lethal, so definitely prioritize these. You'll want to hang back as far back as possible and deal some damage to him when he's not shooting fireballs at you. And after about 20 seconds from the start of the fight, you'll get a wave of enemies that will spawn in and they're going to rush you. This first third of his HP is really not bad, but once you hit that first HP marker, it does get tough if you're not ready for it. So what my team likes to do here is head to the back area. This tunnel that you can see actually protects you from all the fireballs that start launching in your direction. But you basically get them ready. Once you hit that break point, the next round of adds is going to spawn in. And the unstoppable champion you'll see here right to the right side. You just suspend it real quick, nuke it down, and another unstoppable is going to head your way from the other direction. But this area we found is the safest. 
So once this happens, he's gonna get the immunity shield and you'll need to shoot that shield generator in the middle to destroy it. And this is where the beauty of Skyburner's Oath really comes into play. You can shoot from afar right through to that shield generator. You can actually pierce through that uh, overshield that the boss has and you can destroy it from a safe distance, really easy. And once you destroy that shield generator, you immediately want to run back to where you started. This is probably the most hectic part of the fight. You're going to get another wave of ads, so super here if you want. Uh, the boss is also going to be launching fireballs in your direction. It's pretty crazy. Strand Titan is really good here because you can easily stun and deal tons of damage to the unstoppable champions, as well as all of the other enemies. So you're just going to want to deal with everything as quickly as possible since after some time he's going to start launching his fireball attacks again. Do your best to keep some distance from him and deal damage to him when he's not launching fireballs at you. Thankfully no more enemies spawn in for this entire second portion of his HP bar so it's really not bad as long as you're playing it safe. Okay so once you've lowered his HP down to the final breakpoint he'll again go immune and will jump onto the platform toward the far side of the room. Two more unstoppable champions will spawn in here and Ignovin will again start launching more fireballs. So go back to the start of the room again. This will allow you to keep the unstoppable champions at a safe distance and stunned as often as possible so you can just deal with them as they rush at you. So once both unstoppable champions are dead, you'll want to continue to keep a good distance from Ignovin and eventually he'll completely stop launching fireballs at you. It can seem like it takes a while, but he'll eventually just get tired and he'll stop. You can then rush the platform, destroy the immunity shield, just be ready since this is the last section and ads will start pouring out from the rooms by him, but thankfully no more champions. So this is a really good time to use any supers you've been saving to quickly clear out this final wave and allow you to start focusing on Ignobin. So when it's just him on the field, it's not bad since you've got quite a bit of cover, just make sure your team isn't grouped up to avoid the boss getting multi kills on your team. If you've got a Void Hunter with Omni Oculus, revives should be very easy with the invisibility they can give the teammates. And that's it for the Proving Grounds. Not too bad, which is nice because of how good Hung Jury is now. I hope you all get at least kinetic tremors on it. It's a lot of fun. Well, that is it for this one. I will see you all in the Discord or in the next video.